So Africa has for a long time been associated with starvation, famine, and infant death from uh, malnutrition. But things are changing. Um, and the continent can indeed boast of almost a decade of continued economic growth. With of course um, some countries doing far better than others. Today I'm here to talk about an alternative narrative which is developing at alarming rates across the continent. One whereby as we acquire more wealth, consume and eat differently, we become predisposed to lifestyle related conditions like diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, as well as smoking and alcohol related conditions. Whilst many would say that these are the problems that much of the developed world faces today, I'd like to stress the point that Africa is in no way prepared for what is to come because our healthcare infrastructure has indeed remained relatively stagnant. So today I'm going to share three accounts from my personal experiences working in the healthcare space on the continent. I'll share one story firstly from Nigeria another from Ghana and finally from South Africa. So tomorrow I will conclude a week-long discussion on alcohol consumption um, in Nigeria. Um, and my first story stems back to 2012 when I was working at a hospital here in Lagos. I won't name the name of the hospital by the way. So uh, I was there and one Monday morning I was asked to take the medical history of a young man who had been brought in over the weekend. Uh, so it turns out that this gentleman had been involved in a road traffic accident um, on the Friday. He had been drinking quite heavily and that was of course quite common for him. I asked him a few more questions a bit about the whole story and he mentioned the fact that he collided with a vehicle with two passengers unfortunately one of whom passed away. Now, Nigeria is the single largest consumer of alcoholic beverages um, on the continent, and that's per capita, right? However, right, we also have the second highest rates of road traffic accidents, fatalities in the world. In the world, right? So, whilst uh, in the UK and the US, um, a road traffic accident victim um, could get themselves to the hospital within seven minutes. An ambulance would pick them up and take them to a hospital uh, within seven minutes for critical care. My question is, where are the ambulances here in Nigeria to do the same as we continue to change our lifestyles, drink more and drive back this my second story is about diabetes and its related conditions um, in Ghana. So back in 2013, I spent some time working with a very well-known Ghanaian eye surgeon who's doing amazing things in the um, blindness prevention space in sub-Saharan Africa. I spent some time with the team um, at a hospital in Accra, um, as well as a place known as Paswa, um, as well as a place known as Apam. So there was this one particular session where we had this uh, middle-aged lady who came in to get her vision checked. And not many people actually know that diabetes is a leading cause of preventable blindness in the world. So this lady um, had her eyes checked and as she left the room, the physician turned to me and said, Yemisi, uh, that lady has diabetic retinopathy. Now what that essentially means is that this high blood sugar in her, in, her, in her blood has essentially caused some abnormalities at the back of her eyes. Um, and I know that the first hand treatment for that would be to get a special type of laser treatment um, and that would be to uh, preserve vision. So I turn to the physician and I say, what hospital are we referring her to to get this laser treatment? Um, and he looks at me and says, uh, Yemisi, <laughs> no hospital in the country has that laser. Now, although up until today I still find it very difficult to believe that Ghana is so underprepared for such a major problem, one thing that these stories have shown me is that sub-Saharan Africa 
is in no way prepared for the uh, the wave of lifestyle related conditions that um, are coming our way. Uh, many analysts across the globe term this the overnutrition epidemic um, and I would like to conclude with a final story based on my experiences in South Africa. Now I um, have spent quite a bit of time in South Africa um, and uh, I think it's often looked up to as the gold standard of economic success in sub-Saharan Africa, a country in which uh, quite a few other countries uh, desire to emulate. But South Africa actually has the highest rates of obesity um, in the continent, right? So seven in 10 women and four in 10 men are overweight or obese. And at least half of the top 10 pillars in the country are responsible, um, attributable to uh, lifestyle related conditions. So I really do feel that looking at the landscape of South Africa as it is, especially since they are so economically developed, I do feel that there are stories for the rest of sub-Saharan Africa to really pay close attention to and use that to add a greater degree of uh, consciousness to this Africa growth narrative. So Rich People Die Too was the title of a blog post I once read um, and something I thought to be a fitting note for us all to bear in mind um, as we see the landscape of health changing from uh, infectious diseases to ones which are caused by our lifestyle and our diets. Um, I hope you all will go back to your respective places um, and try and uh, induce a change in your environments because I have um, I still have great difficulty in understanding why such predictable trends should become Africa's problem. Um, I look forward to speaking with you all in the break, uh, so please do approach me if you have any questions. Thank you very much for your time.